Wow. It's first light, and here's our first look. Sun's still below the horizon, and we're headed down from the south rim of the Grand Canyon to the Colorado River, the river that's been carving this amazing landscape for millions of years. We'll cross the river and we'll go right back up the other side for that breathtaking view back across the canyon from the north rim, more than 20 miles away. A long day on the trail for me, but you get to do and see it all in an hour. It's really steep up here on the South Kaibab Trail, so we'll switch back and forth for a while along Cedar Ridge. Step lively, but step carefully. On the treadmill trail, I always start out slow. A slow walking pace for the first couple of minutes, then just a little faster, then a brisk walking pace. You get a nice four minute warm up before you start running or fast walking or cycling. Get warm, get loose. Makes the whole 60 minute exercise feel easy and comfortable. And this beautiful place should make these 60 minutes fly by in no time. Relaxed, exhilarating time. Time that's refreshing, because it's different than what you do during all your other time. If you want to listen to your own music while we're cruising the canyon, just switch from trail narration to your music. Choose your tunes and start your trail video again. Or just keep moving. Drums and bass will keep the beat for you, and I'll play Trail Guide. All the way out there, as far as the eye can see, that's the North Rim, where we're going. The trail map says we'll cover 21 miles, but this place is so huge, you really have no idea what scale you're looking at. To my eyes, I mean, it looks like it could be 121 miles across. And it's very nearly one mile down to the river. We've been moving for a couple of minutes now, so you might want to pick up your pace just a little. Take a sip of water now and later on, every four or five minutes. Stay hydrated. Makes everything feel better. And take long, slow, deep breaths. You really have to keep delivering oxygen to your muscles. dozen of them right now and get a little farther down the cliff while the sun gets a little higher in the sky. Great light. Gonna be a beautiful day. A great day. Packed into 60 minutes. We're already four minutes along the trail now and this is where I pick up my pace. I'm done with my warm-up and I'm into a nice easy trail running speed. Not too fast. You don't want to miss this scenery. Good time for a sip of water. And time to love being right here, right now. lights up the canyon. Interesting thing about exercising in the morning it seems to jumpstart your metabolism, and according to the latest research, even moderate exercise like walking and light cycling is enough to boost your mood for the next 12 hours. 
This trail definitely boosted my mood for 12 hours, and I hope it's going to do the same for you. This place is a total party for your eyes, isn't it? Million years old. 
which makes it the youngest kid in the family. Down at the river, where the so-called Vishnu basement rocks are exposed, they're nearly two billion years old. The river's been winding and carving its way through here for millions of years, maybe tens of millions of years, and now we get to see more of the Earth's geological history than you can see at any other place on the planet. And this is the most beautiful history lesson I've ever seen. Straight ahead, that's the O'Neill Butte, and to its left, Skeleton Point. You can actually get a quick peek at the river from the point, but I think we'll stay on the trail and stick with our descent to the Colorado. From here, it's all downhill, until we cross the river, and then it's all uphill. I am in awe. Every minute, every place I turn, this place is truly awesome. I mean, not like, hey dude, your new surfboard's really awesome, man. No, I mean awesome in the original and profound sense of being in awe. That sense of wonder and amazement and reverence and respect for the overwhelming. I mean, it's a great feeling, and uh, no surprise, I guess, it's actually good for you to feel it. For a long time, I've known that I feel particularly pumped up, I mean really exhilarated, during and after my time in a spectacular place. And now there's this research that shows that when it comes to your good health, the feeling of awe is more powerful than joy and pride and contentment and other positive emotions. Yeah, the experience of awe is strongly associated with being able to lower levels of a substance in your blood that's otherwise linked to heart disease and all kinds of inflammation. So if something's awesome enough to pass the goosebump test, it's going to be good for you, just like exercise. In fact, in the study, the emotion of awe was most often reported to be associated with the experience of nature. So hey, exercise by walking across the Grand Canyon, that's the big double whammy. We got it all right here.
shades of red and tan and yellow. We're below the Toraweep and Coconino sandstone layers and into the bright and deep reds of the Supai group. Yeah, we're four miles or so from the trailhead start point, and we've already descended more than 2,000 feet from the south rim, and about 50 to 100 million years. Yeah, we've got a whole different Grand Canyon perspective down here. few million years, the spectacular landscape has looked pretty much just like this. Wow.
age, huh? South Kaibab Trail. On the treadmill trail, here we are. Time for a sip of water and time for a tunnel. Come on in. We have a light at the end of the tunnel. We got a bridge, the Black Bridge, 450 feet across from the south side to the north, 65 feet above the mighty Colorado River, nearly a mile below our starting point, back up on the south rim. We're cruising now. Forward, I'm going to do some sightseeing for both of us. Let's take a look upstream to the east, and then we'll swing around to the south to look back up in the direction we came from. Yeah, the south side of the Grand Canyon is so steep that these lower basement rocks, they block our view up to the south rim. Now to the west, the mighty Colorado flows downstream. Let's go with the flow. Seven miles of the South Kaibab Trail behind us, 14 miles of the North Kaibab Trail ahead of us. 14 miles north, 5,761 feet up. 
Here we go. of the Colorado behind and head north along Bright Angel Creek. We got 30 minutes of treadmill trail behind us and just 30 minutes more to enjoy. For me, just 26 more minutes till I begin my four minute cool down. So I'm picking up my pace. How about you? You ready to take it up to your fastest comfortable pace for 26 minutes? Yes! Okay, we're on the North Kaibab Trail now. It follows the path of Bright Angel Creek for miles and the creek provides the irrigation for everything green that we're going to see here on the north side, which makes this a good time for a sip of water. forces until they became this very dense rugged rock that's named the Vishnu Basement Rock. A couple of billion years later, still here, exposed by millions of years of erosion by the Colorado River and its tributaries. Looks like it'll be here for at least two billion more.
this is a great time for a sip of water, because by now, you're probably in that runner's high time zone. Yeah, get this. Research suggests that it's not an endorphin high that distance runners feel, though it's certainly true that our bodies produce endorphins when we have prolonged exertion. Now, it turns out it's actually an endocannabinoid high. Yeah, cannabinoids, as in the active ingredient in marijuana, they're actually produced by our bodies when we have certain kinds of stimulus, like running marathons. I mean, the endocannabinoid molecules are small enough to pass through the blood-brain barrier, and they actually affect at least one aspect of brain function. So when you hear a marathon runner talk about pure happiness, elation, peacefulness, boundless energy, well, what do you think that sounds like? Yeah, sounds like a good reason to keep moving, huh? on this very happy trail.
minutes along the trail now. Time for a sip of water. We're doing great. Let's stay focused on our trail and everything around it. The grasses, the trees, the air. You're breathing. This isn't work. It's not a workout. It's not a race course. It's your 60-minute refresher course. The hour when you don't do all the things you do the other 23 hours every day. This is all about right now, the home stretch. We're cruising, fast feet, slow deep appreciation, that runner's high, feel no pain. You're in cruise control, on automatic, low awareness of your churning muscles, high awareness of everything around you, like getting to see the world in slow motion. I love this place. Come on, another 15 minutes at your fastest comfortable pace, then an easy, gradual cool down.
canyon views are opening up now, so we can see for miles, and we can see cliffs that are thousands of feet above us. But it's still going to be a while more before we can see all the way up to our destination, the North Rim. And we do have a completely clear trail ahead, which is perfect for a brisk pace. Because it turns out that brisk is better for your health. How fast is brisk? Well, there are people who actually study this stuff, and they found that if you keep up a pace that's faster than two and a half miles an hour, you're getting greater health benefits from your walking. How much faster? Well, that doesn't seem to matter much. People who walked a moderately brisk three miles an hour, or a very brisk three and three quarter miles an hour, even a race walking four and a half miles an hour, they all got the same health benefit. So if you can pick up the pace a bit, well, there is a benefit. But if you can't, don't. There's still a huge benefit from walking at any pace compared to doing nothing. You're still burning calories and you are doing great. And if you are jogging, well, I just read the results of this other study. Its title is Regular Jogging Shows Dramatic Increase in Life Expectancy. Really? How dramatic? Six years. Six years of extra life compared to folks who don't exercise. How regular is this regular jogging? It's between one and two and a half hours per week. That's all. Somewhere between two and five treadmill trails a week. And how fast is this regular jogging? Well, it's slower, actually. The participants in the study who reported that their pace was slow or moderate, they had the greatest increase in longevity. It sounds to me like another example of do everything in moderation. Except maybe for where you walk briskly and where you jog moderately. I definitely go for the extreme when it comes to beautiful and exciting trails. And everything about this one is beautiful. And this place is so huge, it's like many places in one. The different geological zones, the different climate zones. Each one's like a different botanical garden. I mean, down at the river we saw willows, mesquite, acacia, and tamarisk. A little higher it was sagebrush, pinon and juniper woodlands, cactuses, yucca. And now we're working our way up to ponderosa pines, gamble oaks, and locust trees. And when we actually get up on the north rim, it's all Inglement spruce, blue spruce, Douglas fir, white fir, aspen trees. Yeah, this place is the definition of grand. And this is a grand time for a sip of water. Farther and farther, greener and greener. We're in the southwestern United States, but if we were in Japan, they'd say we were forest bathing, taking a relaxing bath, a dry bath, in the woods, which many Japanese people do regularly. In Japan, they think of walking in the woods as preventive medicine. They actually have dozens of official forest therapy trails there, and 25% of the population uses them. This nature bathing, it gives a rest to the planning and problem-solving parts of your brain so you feel refreshed. And now we know that even looking at pictures of nature in a lab reduces stress and makes you feel happier. It actually turns off all that stuff that causes mental fatigue. So, eyes on your treadmill trail version of nature. After 30 minutes in on this trail, you should be feeling relaxed and refreshed. Fresh and sharp. Thank you.
come on, we're almost there. Time for a sip of water. It's been getting steep, so this is where you start telling yourself, hey, I'm doing great. I know I'm going to make it to the top, because that actually helps. I read this study in a journal called Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise. Listen to the title, Talking Yourself Out of Exhaustion, The Effects of Self-Talk on Endurance Performance. It turns out that athletes who train to give themselves frequent and repeated verbal encouragement during exercise, they were able to exercise longer and stronger than other athletes. Yeah, it seems that the feeling of exhaustion is in your head, not your muscles. So being your own cheerleader actually helps to keep you going. Now you might be wondering, what were these magic mantras? Well, it was stuff like, you're doing well, and feeling good. Honest, that's all it took. And you know, you are doing great. Let's keep moving. All we have to do is follow the trail. We're moving through it all like a daydream. A daydream where we're totally awake, totally alive, totally stimulated by all this sensory input, all this natural beauty. This is where we want to be, moving forward, your brain on nature, your body in motion. glimpses of Roaring Springs, that big waterfall. All the way up there, that's the North Rim. We've come a long way up from the river, but we still have a way to go. Okay, four minutes more to the big view from up top. We'll stay on the high road. That trail down to the right crosses the sub-canyon to get over to Roaring Springs. On the treadmill trail, this is where I slow down and begin my four-minute cool-down. But I think I'll keep the incline cranked up, just so I remember how steep this last stretch feels after 20 miles. I know we've already seen more than our fair share of beautiful rock walls on this trail, but look at these rock walls! I mean, really, is this place spectacular or what? And is this a good time for a sip of water? You bet.
coming to the end of today's geology class, kids. Take it all in. It is so beautiful. So awesome in the original sense of the word. There's nothing else like it. Nothing close. And hiking it rim to rim in a day, getting to see it all, it's overwhelming. And I hope it's been as good for you as it's been for me. Here it comes. Prepare to drop your jaw. Again. Welcome to the North Rim. What a view of the South Rim. Where we started. Is that steep or what? No wonder the trail began with all those switchbacks. Great 30 minutes. Congratulations and happy trails.